Arataki Ito is finally out, and this video covers everything you need to know about his build, as well as provides you with a complete review and showcase of his true potential. It's honestly been quite the journey with Ito. He is not your typical brawler because there's some great mechanics he offers for people willing to master his playstyle to get the best big numbers. And even if he excels in one specific team, there's a lot of interesting choices you can go for to amplify his damage even further. But just like everyone else, he comes with his own set of flaws, which some can be worked around, while others are just part of who he is. But I want you to know that unlike other content creators out there, I did get to play with Arataki for the past week before his release thanks to Mihoyo, so I spent a lot of time figuring this guy out and I believe this video will offer the best insight about him, so be sure to leave a like on the video for that whole week I've spent training in the mountains with Ito. Now the first thing I want to show you is the rundown about his main mechanic, which are the superlative super strength stacks, and if you want to graduate at the top of your class as the best Unga Bunga basher in Genshin, here's how to master his playstyle. So basically, Ito without his burst is pretty much useless, and you'll want Want to focus on obtaining those superlative stacks, which can then be consumed by using a charge attack and transforming them into Arataki Keisagiri slashes. You can gain one stack by landing his second normal attack, or two stacks by landing his fourth normal attack, so you can basically gain three of these stacks by just doing his complete normal attack combo, but the cool thing about him is that you can first interrupt his combo by doing a quick dash or by using his skill, and you can still resume the combo afterwards. Also, you don't even need to land the first or third normal attacks in a row, since the game only cares about his second and fourth hits connecting, so you can wave around his weapon, land the fourth attack, and still gain two stacks. Oh, and one more thing to note, when Ito is in his burst mode, his first and third normal attacks will now also grant one stack, essentially letting you gain five stacks by just unloading his whole normal attack combo. But the real deal starts with his elemental skill, because not only is Ushi extremely cute, but he is also going to be a huge source of stacks, because you can gain one by just hitting your enemy, then one more after the tiny bull disappears, and finally, you can gain up to two stacks within six seconds after Ushi gets hit by an enemy, since he will taunt everyone around him. In total, with the right positioning when using the skill, I was able to score four superlative stacks consistently when there's a lot of incoming enemy attacks. Also, this is kind of sad, but if you're sadistic enough, the poor bull can gain stacks when he's burning on the grass. Speaking of which, Ito's stack count is always visible on his back because you can obtain up to a maximum of 5 stacks and you'll easily know when he reaches the limit because there will be this cool explosion animation giving you the cue it's time to unload his slashes. Now there are two damage multipliers for his slashes, one of them is always used when he does the regular slash, but once you're down to a single superlative stack, it will be consumed as a final slash and deals considerably more more damage than the other one. But this is where it's probably a good time to talk about his combo-oriented playstyle. So a good rotation I found so far, assuming you have the burst ready with zero stacks, would be by opening up with a single normal attack, immediately followed by the skill, and then continuing to do three more normal attacks, and then use all the slashes, and finally, do the full normal attack combo, consume the slashes, and then quickly weave in the elemental skill as a finisher. There's some room left for up to two dashes to reposition Ito, and it's also possible you could premature surely end one of the normal attack combos and weave in his slashes sooner, since Ushi's stack generation depends if the enemy managed to hit him during his duration, because as previously mentioned, worst case scenario you get 2 stacks and best case scenario you end up with 4 stacks from the bull. But that's pretty much how Arataki works. The rest of the stuff like gaining massive interruption resistance from the passive when he does the slashes is something that's easy to spot, and the next thing that I want to show you is how you can build him into a powerhouse unit. Just like any traditional damage dealer, building our Ataki isn't that big of a deal and you only really need to be aware of a couple of crucial things to maximize his damage potential. First of all, when we talk about weapons, his signature Claymore Redhorn Stone Thresher is absolutely tailor-made for him, so if you just want a guaranteed no questions asked power upgrade, this is something you might want to consider. But setting aside Redhorn for a moment, his next best weapons would be Serpent Spine, White Blind and Blacklift Slasher, all of which are forced 
star claymores that you can easily slap on him and call it a day, with Serpent Spine at second refinement coming out slightly at the top, and the more refined it gets, the better the results will become. Although, if you're a free-to-play player, you could instead craft White Blind. Just keep in mind, aside from Ito and Noel, it's not really viable on anyone else, so that's why Blacklift Slasher might be a good alternative. Even if it does have a passive that loses its potential when you're facing off against bosses or fewer enemies. Honestly, the difference in overall damage between Unrefined White Blind, Blacklift, and Serpent Spine isn't that huge, but if you compare their max refined forms, then Serpent Spine beats the other two by a good margin, and let's not forget it also has critical rated and substat, so it's easier to obtain better critical rate and damage ratio. And when we look at these four weapons, Unrefined Red Horn offers the best overall damage when compared against Max Refined Serpent Spine, and then starting from second refinement, Serpent Spine beats Blacklift Slasher and White Blind. But what about the other 5-star weapons? Well, few that come to mind are Unforge, Skyward Pride, and Wolf's Gravestone, but their damage potential are about on the same level as Unrefined White Blind, although Wolf's Gravestone can provide a buff for the whole team, and Skyward Pride's Energy Recharge can be beneficial if you do not obtain some of it from Artifact substats. Basically, you've got three really good 4-star Claymore options and one expensive pay-to-win Red Horn that will beat its competition, but with that being said, you can get great results even with something like White Blind, and if you have been purchasing the Battle Pass and refining the Serpent's Spine, then it's pretty much a no-brainer choice for him. Speaking of great things, when looking at his artifact loadouts, the best one hands down is going to be the Husk of Opulent Dreams for set. but if you have the same luck as I do after spending 6000 resin and still ending up with mediocre results, then the next best alternative is a double 2 set of Archaic Petra and Husk, although if you are one of those few people out there who have farmed up a decent Retracing Bolite for set, its bonuses are almost on par with the double 2 sets mentioned, but keep in mind you'll need to have a really good shield support to help him capitalize on this set bonus. Any other two set combinations of Archaic, Husk, and 18% attack bonuses can be mixed and matched, but they only exist as viable options when those artifact pieces have cracked substats. And now that I've mentioned it, you definitely want to go for these main stats and substats shown here. Just keep in mind that critical rate circlet is recommended if you cannot achieve around 70% critical rate without it, which, let's be honest, it is going to be a very likely scenario. And the other big thing that needs to be talked about is his energy recharge. Charge. It's no secret Ito excels in Mono Geo, which I'll talk about in a minute, but even with a couple of Geo teammates, he still needs to get at least 140% ER just so he can have consistent uptime with his burst because, well, without it, his white damage hits like a wet noodle, and you're just wasting your time by not having fun with his burst mode. As an example, here's how I've currently built him, even with the most horrible luck in the world. And then luckily, I did get a fat energy recharge substat here, so it's easier to just manage his burst rotations without waiting for the energy to fill up. Overall, building him is pretty much straightforward because, as previously mentioned, a good chunk of damage depends on how well you can manage his slash attack stacks, but if that's not enough, his build can also depend on the type of teammates you're going to use with him, which brings us to this next part. When we talk about Mono Geo, it's hard to ignore Goro's fluffy presence, since he provides so much value for Ito that it's not even funny, because by just having Goro's elemental skill at level 8, Ito will receive additional 590 defense if he is at level 90, and extra 15% Geo damage bonus after Goro drops his burst. But if you've got another teammate like Albedo, you can also snapshot this buff onto his flower and score big bloom damage while Ito is busy wiping the floor with enemies. He is basically an analog version of Bennett, and after comparing the two, they do offer kind of similar power boosts. So if you end up missing out on Goro, you can still use Benny Boy together with Ito, just like how you would normally do with any other big hitter. Now, the thing about Mono Geo is that if we assume you have Ito and Goro, the last Geo spot could be filled by either Albedo or Zhongli, and even with Geo Traveler or Ningguang, since they do provide pretty decent energy generation and can help alleviate Ito's burst cost. But one thing you need to keep in mind is that Ito has one problem in common with characters like Xiao, Yula, and Hu Tao, and it's the fact if you want to smoothly build up his stacks and unleash the slash attacks, he needs to be protected by a shield, since even if he won't get knocked away when he uses slash attacks thanks to insane resistance he gains from the passive, he can still bounce around when actually trying to do the normal attacks, especially if you want to land his fourth normal attack for the double stack gain. 
Now, the other big thing you want to consider is the last team spot, because it's enough to run 3 Geo characters to get all of Goro's benefits, and at the same time, have a consistent energy generation for the whole team. So you could potentially just go for another Geo and accept its supremacy, but there are some options from other elements. Some easy recommendations that come to mind would be Bennett for healing and additional damage buffing, or Fischl, who can support the team with her low maintenance playstyle, especially if you have her at C6 that improves energy generation, although you could also go for Electro Traveler if you still need help with energy. But there's always the option to use a Catalyst character like Mona, Kokomi or Lisa, each of them equipped with Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers, so when you switch to Ito, he can do even bigger attacks. In fact, Mona is great with further boosting damage thanks to her burst. Kokomi can use her Jellyfish in combination with Tenacity of Millilith Artifact Force Set, and Lisa's burst actually shreds away enemies' defense by 15%. Although, keep in mind to make Mona Lisa work consistently, they will need lots and lots of energy recharge just to maintain their bursts as often as possible. So, with all of that being said, since Ito's burst snapshots, you want to do all of the buffing and setup before going into his burst mode, which includes by first shielding up with either Diona or Zhongli, then using Goro's skill followed by burst, and then afterwards switching to Albedo's flower, and then any buffer like Mona with Thrilling Tails should be the second last teammate so you can finally switch to Ito and maximize the damage. But you're probably wondering by now, can you use Ito outside of Mono Geo? I mean, in world exploration and casual events? Yeah, obviously, but in time trials, especially the final floor of the Abyss where every second counts, then not really, because it's not even his problem but the element itself. Geo doesn't offer any kind of offensive reactions, so there's nothing like Vaporize or Melt, which can double up the numbers and has been the cornerstone for basically every top tier team out there, maybe aside from Freeze, but even there, the power lies in keeping your enemies still in one place, while the only thing Geo reactions can offer you are some paper thin shields. There's also the fact Ito's burst has a pretty huge cost even at 70 and you really don't want to build additional energy recharge just so he can maybe work in a double geo comp which is possible with few variations like Favonius Shangling and Bennett or Raiden together with Fischl but outside of that he is best at mono geo along with some characters who can boost these already excellent damage multipliers. But that's purely from the perspective of a C0 Ito. What about his constellations and how broken can you expect him to become from them? Well, even after getting the first constellation, it already becomes so much easier to manage his stacks, so now he can do something like 7 slashes if you start the burst and follow up with a skill and one normal attack, assuming you had 0 stacks to begin with. On the other hand, the second constellation doubles down on Mono Geo's supremacy when there's 3 Geode characters in the team, including himself, by offering to refund 18 energy and reduce the cooldown by 4.5 seconds when the burst is used, essentially waving away any worries you would otherwise have about his energy recharge, since you'll only need like 110-120% to of it. And as much as I love his cute bull companion, the third constellation is just a stepping stone towards the fourth one, which now gives 20% defense and 20% additional attack for the whole team after his burst ends. Although keep in mind these numbers are based on characters base defense and attack, so don't expect a huge power leap. Finally, the fifth constellation is a great way to make him deal more damage during his burst, but the final one is where the bait is set for the whales, because now his slash attacks will receive a whopping 70% crit damage, and there's 50% chance the stack won't even get consumed, meaning he could indefinitely keep slashing based on random chance. Honestly, he feels pretty much complete even at C0, while the first and second constellations offer decent enough damage boost and reduction in energy recharge, so if you're undecided, it's probably for the best to just stick with zero constellations, unless of course you get lucky with pulling him more than once. Arataki is definitely one of the more interesting new characters released in Genshin, not just because of his mechanics, but the fact Mihoyo artificially introduced a pretty powerful team composition you can utilize with him, and seeing how Geo doesn't really get along that well with other elements, why not just build your own Mono Geo supremacy team and have fun with smashing enemies away. Overall, Ito's damage potential is great even at C0, and while it was possible with someone like Noel to lead Mono Geo team, he definitely revitalizes this newest trendy variation, and 
one thing that's really awesome about him is the elemental skill, because not only does it have a decent damage multiplier, but it also provides with a good amount of particles, and it also taunts, which helps him keep his enemies steady for some bashing. There are some notable drawbacks, like the fact his burst cost is pretty expensive, which limits his team variation options, and it's also annoying that unlike Noel, if you switch him out, the burst also ends, which can sometimes be a necessary step needed if you want to heal him or restart some of the buffs. Also, even if Geo is capable of damaging enemy shields, it's hard to imagine if Ito's mono Geo team won't struggle against something like two heralds from different elements, since it's only viable to bring one character from a different element. Still, Ito definitely deserves to be the new face of Geo teams, and I would say that for veterans of the game who are looking to create a new team that's basically functioning without any other popular characters, it's something that's worth considering, especially if you like the whole combo playstyle approach Ito offers. Hope you found the video useful and enjoyed watching it. I've put a ton of work into this video and really wanted to make sure you guys are getting the best and most accurate build on day one, but it's challenging to make something without at least few mistakes, so if there are any, check out my pinned comment below the video. Thanks for watching and see you soon.